Hello, I'm Master Marslander, and this is the Ferrum Audio or Fully Balanced Solid State Headphone Amplifier. And there's more to this than meets the eye. So this is actually the first video in what's going to be a three-part video series covering the Ferrum stack. We're going to talk about the power supply, the DAC, and then the amplifier, which is what we have with us today. But before we get too far into it, full disclosure that Ferrum Audio sent these units to me for these reviews. But of course, as always, all thoughts, words, and opinions are going to be my own. So who the heck is Ferrum? Well, if you're not familiar, they're a Polish company. This was manufactured, made, and designed in Poland. And then the name Ferrum itself is actually Latin for iron, hence the kind of rust patterned and textured logo they have on the units here. So let's go ahead and start this journey with a tour of the build. Here is the unit. This is the OR, the amplifier, the headphone desktop amplifier. OR turns out is actually the Dutch word for ear. So OR, ear, headphone amplifier. Cool stuff. Right out of the box, one thing I want to mention about this build here. This is pretty small for what is a pretty substantial amplifier. If we're to examine just the sheer scale of this, it compares almost identically with something like the Drop THX AAA 789. I mean, look, it's only just slightly bigger than the 789. And that's very impressive because this is a much bigger beast. And the scale here is something to be of note and I think brings some value to this amplifier because most $2,000, yes, this is a $2,000 amplifier. Most $2,000 amplifiers with this level of quality internals are substantially larger than a simple desktop amplifier like this. So that's something that does, I think, carry some value if you're looking to save some space on your desk. Let's start with the faceplate. So here's the face of our ore. First, of course, we have our logo here. Now this piece, there's been a bit of confusion about, I think. This is not painted. This is not a sticker. What this little Ferrum logo piece is, is actually Corten steel, which is also known as weathering steel, is a steel that is purposely designed to rust like this to achieve this aesthetic. So this is an actual hunk of steel rusted to make this look. And that's cool. I think that's neat. Hooray. But yes, not a sticker, not paint on an actual solid piece of metal that's been purposely rusted to achieve this aesthetic. So looking at what we have in terms of controls here on the front face, everything here is super simple and it's all analog. You see, there's no digital display here at all or anything even remotely resembling it. We have very satisfying clicky dials here, again, kind of reminiscent of what is on the 789. So on the faceplate here, we have the four pin XLR balanced, the unbalanced single ended quarter inch, and then these two adjusting dials. The first dial chooses your input. We turn it to the left to select our RCA, turn it to the right to select XLR, and then the middle position is actually the off position. It will turn off the volume of the amplifier, but not totally cut the power from the amplifier. You'll still get a nice glow from the logo here if you choose to have the glow on in the first place. The second knob is for adjusting your gain. And the amount of gain that gets adjusted here is dependent on whether or not you're using the single-ended or the balance. If you're using the single-ended output, then these adjust based off of 10 decibels. So minus 10, zero, and 10 plus 10 decibels of gain. If you're running this balanced, it's a little bit different. When running a balanced, minus is actually minus four dB. Zero is actually plus six dB and plus dB is actually plus 16 dB. So there is a difference in how much gain you're getting depending on if you're using the balance or single ended. Next, we have our volume knob here. Minimum, max, pretty simple. And it is a pretty smooth linear dial here. It's pretty basic, feels nice, feels good. It's not by any means like really, really loose. I'm not worried about it like slipping on me. So it has a little bit of resistance to it. Feels nice, nice, smooth, good volume knob. And from my experience, it's pretty linear. You're not getting huge jumps in volume depending on the position. It's pretty gradual all the way through the rotation. 
Okay, let's look at the back of the unit where things start to get pretty interesting. Wow, look at all that stuff back there. So first, our inputs. We have our fully balanced XLR inputs here for your left and your right. You have your RCA inputs here, and you also have your outputs XLR for right and left, as well as RCA. This dial right here is for the brightness of the logo. Like I said, the logo on the front here does actually light up. It's a just a nice, simple white light. And how bright that logo gets, that gets determined by this wheel back here. You can rotate that. Again, everything is analog on this thing. So you have just a rotating dial right here to adjust your brightness. Here we have our pretty simple DC input, 22 to 30 volts. And then this piece right here is actually pretty interesting. This is the FLP connector, the Ferrum power link. This is what's used to connect the ore to the Ferrum Hipsys, the power supply. That does lots of cool things, which we'll talk more about in the Hipsys video, so you can look forward to that. We're not gonna go into that in this video because we're gonna treat the amplifier just as it is by itself. But if you wanted to, yes, this is where you would connect your Ferrum or amplifier to the Ferrum Hipsys. Finally, we have this dial right here. Look at that logo right there. You see that? See the little icon? That's a warning. This is a warning. Be warned. This dial is very cool, but it is dangerous. You must be careful because what this is, is like it says, this is a bypass. And what this does is it turns this headphone amplifier into a power amplifier. It completely disables all volume control on the unit and will just be churning out power at you. So you need to make sure that you don't fuss with the bypass unless you know what you're doing. You have to make sure that it is connected to some sort of device that can control the volume because once you do, once you activate that bypass, you will not be able to control volume anymore on the unit. It will be performing at, well, not high gain, but middle gain, full power. It is potentially pretty dangerous, so be aware of that, be careful. And if you're gonna use it, just make sure you understand what it is and how to go about using it. So yeah, it's a pretty simple build. It is pretty unassuming especially for a $2,000 amplifier. Now, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty expensive amp. And I'll be the first to admit that most $2,000 amplifiers are built probably quite a bit more nicely than this is. They have, you know, a lot of them are built of solid hunks of aluminum and just have a really clean and powerful aesthetic. This, is a much, much more subtle aesthetic, in my opinion. And that's gonna be up to you how you feel about that, because if you wanted to, I can make the argument that this is kind of a sleeper aesthetic. It doesn't look very assuming. It doesn't look like it's that big of a deal. It looks like your average desktop amplifier. It doesn't look like it's any anything special, which can be kind of cool in its own right. But uh, otherwise, yes, I will be the first to admit that it is Maybe not the most visually stunning amplifier at that price range, but it's certainly functional. And I definitely like the logo here. I think that's a pretty, that's a, that's a striking piece right there and really seals the aesthetic and the brand of this entire lineup. So I do like that a lot. It, it could look nicer, I will admit. Another quick note is that when this is on, when this is running, it does get very hot, hot to the touch even. Not like gonna burn your fingers off necessarily, but it does get very, very warm. And that is by design, so it's not something to be alarmed about when you when it does happen to you. But because it does get so warm, if you are going to run this as a stack, I do recommend you put the amplifier on the top of your stack rather than on the bottom or in the middle of your stack because it's going to then warm up the other units of your stack. So put it on top, give it some more air ventilation, and it maybe will be controlled a little bit better. But again, it's designed that way. I quickly messaged Farron when I had the experience of it getting super warm. They told me to worry about it. That's how it's designed. Nothing to worry about. It's it's completely as intended, but yes. The unit gets pretty warm. Be oh, Just be aware of that. Now let's talk technical specs. I'm going to throw the specs list right here on screen for you so you can actually 
take a look at them, and then I encourage you to go ahead and pause the video to read over this if you really want to absorb it. But here's the specs that I want to highlight here. First, I want to highlight the total harmonic distortion, the THD. It's only at 0.00011%. Very, very quiet, very, very low distortion. I have never once heard any noise floor while running this thing, be it through large headphones, high impedance headphones, low impedance headphones, or even little tiny IEMs. Never heard a noise floor on this thing, so it is super quiet, super clean. Very low distortion. The other thing I wanna highlight is the power output. Eight watts per channel at 60 ohms. That's a ton of power, my goodness. And then at 32 ohms, you're actually going above that. I believe it was, I believe it was Golden Sound in his review, which I, I very much encourage you to look at if you wanna get more of a glimpse of the internals of this thing. We're not gonna go over internals in this video, but he does a great job on opening this up and showing that off. So I encourage you to watch his review. I'll have a link in the description for that. But yeah, uh, at 32 ohms, you're looking at closer to nine watts per channel. So a huge amount of power for any headphone out there. It even also hits 1.6 watts into 300 ohms. And that is kind of the sweet spot for the super hard to drive headphones like the hi fi Men Susvara or the Modhouse Tungsten. And now with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound performance. This is a very neutral sounding amplifier. It leans just ever slightly on the kind of warmer end of it, but otherwise a very, very neutral and natural sounding amplifier. It is not the kind of cold and analytical sound you're getting from something like a topping A90D. It's, or even the THX uh, AAA 789, it's a lot more natural, a lot more neutral. And in contrast, feels a lot warmer to those much more analytical amplifiers. It also produces a good amount of soundstage, a little, a little extra in there, and it sounds wonderful. It gives a bit more air, a bit more space to anything that you're kind of plugging into it. I've had IEM sound a little bit wider, planar sound wider, dynamic sound wider, it's not super substantial, but it is noticeable. You're getting more soundstage than you would be, again, from something like a topping A90D. The dynamics are great, impactful, punchy, and nicely defined. It's a very energetic and fun sounding amp, and it provides this almost, almost tube-like sound out of a solid state, especially when it comes to open back planars, which is, I think, really cool because Planars in general don't really cooperate very well with tube amplifiers, but really plugging in something like my Moondrop Para into this, it gives almost the same kind of staging and warmth and energy that plugging a dynamic into a tube amp does. But to be clear, it, it, it doesn't distort the way that a tube amplifier does. This is an exceptionally clean amplifier very, very clean. You saw the, the noise distortion. One of the most detailed listening experiences I've ever had has been on this amplifier. So it is by no means the kind of purposeful distortion that you get from tube amps. It just, at least when it comes to planars in particular, it offers this almost tube-like experience. Comparing it to the other amplifiers I have here on my desk, the Ore is very much far away the best performing amplifier here. It offers so much more detail retrieval, especially in terms of image separation. Everything that I connect to it, the imaging gets so vastly wider. I don't mean in soundstage, I mean that like the separation of everything is further stretched and you're able to pinpoint so many more details and so many more spaces and where they're coming from, you're able to identify so much easier and with so much more precision. The imaging and the detail retrieval on this is insane. It is fabulous, absolutely wonderful. And it's so neutral with just the slightest edge of warmth to make things just slightly more energetic, but it doesn't flavor it. It doesn't add coloration to the sound. It's very, very transparent. It's very, very honest, but it presents it in such a kind of dynamic and energetic way. It makes things so much fun to listen to. It makes all my headphones sound different enough that like the headphones themselves feel like they're a little bit of a different headphone. And that's really cool because none of my other 
amplifiers do that. Maybe it's not really a matter of it sounding like a different headphone. Maybe it's more like a matter of like, this is what the headphones were always supposed to sound like, but none of these other amps can do it. I don't know, but it almost awakens this extra, like it's unveiling something in my headphones that I've never experienced before with those headphones. It just kind of opens everything up a little bit more with anything I plug into it. Everything opens up more, more air, more detail, more immersive imaging. And, and again, that little extra stretch of soundstage, it just makes things sound big, but also there's, it's so clean and it's so detailed. Oof, it, it, it's, it's an experience. And again, is far and away the best performing amplifier I now have here on the desk. So overall, it's a great sounding amp by itself, but connecting it to the Ferrum Hipsys, the power supply, you do get some interesting benefits. And again, we're not gonna cover that in this video because this video is just about the amp by itself, but stay tuned for the Hipsys video to, we'll, we'll break down a bit more of what changes when this is working with the Hipsys. So yes, the Yor is great. It's not cheap. It is a $2,000 amplifier. That's a lot but you are getting really impressive components in here. Again, if you want to see a breakdown of that, I have a link in the description. Excellent, excellent build, albeit pretty simple. All the analog inputs are fabulous. They feel great, the knobs are great, the input's great, and you have just a crap ton of options here in, on the IO in the back. So, I mean, it's, it's a fully packed, fully functional amplifier that really, really does deliver, but uh, we'll talk more about what it's like with the Hipsys. So that about wraps up this video. Stay tuned for video number two, where we will talk about the DAC, the Ferrum Audio Wandala. Look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again soon.